Hollywood Diversity Report in front of and behind the camera. I'm Dr. Darnell Hunt. I'm professor of sociology and African American studies at UCLA and director of the Ralph J. Bunn Center for African American <coughs> Studies. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this event. Now, as you can see, we have a very distinguished panel here. Uh, to my immediate right, we have Mr. Robert Townsend. <laughs> of course, you know him as an actor, writer, producer, director, responsible for, and or appearing in dozens of television shows and films. Among the more notable titles include The Five Heartbeats. Yeah. 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 Meteor Man. To his right, we have Doreen Spicer Danley. She's a writer, producer, director who's developed the Disney Channel's animated series, The Proud Family. And she's also credited with writing the film Jump In. To her right, we have Tracy Twinkie Bird. She's a leading casting director in the industry. She's credited with casting television shows such as BET's Being Mary Jane. Yeah. Aaliyah, the princess of R&B. Yeah. And the Gabby Douglas story. She's also known for casting the critically acclaimed film Fruitvale Station. Yeah. And last but certainly not least, my longtime friend, Ren Brown, <laughs> actor, producer, director, who has appeared in dozens of television shows and films, including Grey's Anatomy, <laughs> Everybody Hates Chris, <laughs> and Wiggy Kick Dale. He's also a producer of Bozeman and Lena, starring Danny Glover and Angela Bassett. Okay, before we get started, I want to remind you guys, this is the age of social media, so we want to definitely make this event known, so we want you to tweet, hashtag NCBSLA. Everybody got that? NCBSLA? All right? Follow uh, at NCBS online, and Facebook likes at National Council for Black Studies. Everybody got that? All right, very good. We want to see those tweets and Facebook likes. All right, so this is the plan for this evening. Uh, we got started a little late here, but we're gonna make up some time here. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna spend about the next hour and 20 minutes or so exploring this question of diversity or the lack thereof in Hollywood. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up, I'm gonna talk for about 10 minutes and present some basic findings from a report that we released at the Bunch Center about two weeks ago called the 2015 Hollywood Diversity Report it kind of puts in perspective what's happening in front of and behind the camera in Hollywood as it relates to people of color and women. All right? Um, that's going to set the stage for a discussion that this illustrious panel is going to have. We're going to basically have a conversation here about their experiences in the industry and how it relates to some of the numbers I'm going to present to you. And then we're going to have about 30 minutes or so for you, the audience, to participate in the Q&A. Is everybody okay with that? All right. So let's get started. Okay, here's a quote that I, I very fond of. I, I enjoy this quote. It really kind of goes to the heart of what we're talking about here today. We are, as a species, addicted to story. Even when the body goes to sleep, the mind stays up all night telling itself stories. All right? So what is the point of that quote? Well, the point is, it's not just entertainment. All right? In fact, today we're going to talk about many dimensions of the issue of diversity in Hollywood. The first one deals with access. We're talking about employment for people like those people here on the podium. Um, access to jobs, all right? And the degree to which black people have equal access to those types of jobs. One of the things we know about this industry is that it's huge, it's big business. Um, black households, for example, watch more television than whites. We watch about 50% more TV. Uh, we also know that people of color go to the movies more often. Uh, 
fact, they represent about 51% of frequent moviegoers. And we also know that frequent moviegoers buy more than half of all movie tickets. So we already have a stake in the industry. So the question is, what are we doing on the employment side? Um, but it's also about representation. And what I mean here is the images that circulate in society that tell us who we are as a people, who we aren't, maybe who we hope to be. Popular images are important because they normalize a way of thinking about a people or a society, uh, particularly when we bombard with those images on a constant basis. Okay. And then when we don't have face-to-face -face experience with people, often the images stand in for, for those real experiences and shape the way we think about the people. It's one of the reasons why in the early days of mass media, the NAACP was so concerned with images in films like Birth of a Nation or TV shows like Amos and Andy. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but this diagram here, it appears in a book that the late Stuart Hall um, edited called The Circuit of Culture, talks about the role that representation plays in society, the ways in which it's linked to identity, the way we understand ourselves, the way we think about who we are because of the images that circulate, um, the things we produce uh, in terms of our music, our culture, our art, uh, the things we consume, how we dress, um, the types of art we consume, the types of television we watch, and regulation, the way we think about the boundaries of the groups that we're, we're a part of. Representation is bound up in all of this, and so media images are much more than just mere entertainment. They have a real impact on our culture, on our society. So what I want to do really quickly is take a look at this diagram here, which shows us where we're headed as a nation demographically. I mean, already we're at about 37% of the population if you think about people of color, collectively. Uh, as you can see, these two lines cross, and they're going to cross in about 2043, at which point this nation will become majority minority, all right? But demographically, these effects are already with us in the sense that our youth population is already majority minority. And in fact, we're seeing major changes in audiences in terms of their preferences and what they want. And the question is, how is Hollywood keeping up, if at all? So, the data for the study that we released two weeks ago is based on 172 films released in 2012, 175 films released in 2013, uh, 1,105 TV shows from the 2012-2013 season. Yes, there are that many TV shows. We looked at everything, broadcast, cable, scripted, unscripted, reality, you name it, uh, digital, uh, we looked at all of that. Uh, lead talent, race and gender, director, race and gender. We looked at show creator, race and gender. We looked at writer diversity. We looked at box office figures. And we looked at household ratings. So, what did we find? Well, let's talk about film first. If we look at film leads, we see that people of color collectively are woefully underrepresented. Uh, in 2012, 15.1% um, of leads in film uh, were, were people of color or minorities, and that's underrepresentation by a factor of greater than two to one. If you think that, you know, again, minorities are about 37% of the population today. In 2013, there was a little bit of an uptick, but not much. We're still underrepresented by about two to one, 16.7% uh, of those leads. If we look at film directors, it's worse. Uh, Underrepresentation by a factor of greater than three to one. About 11% of the directors in 2012 were people of color. Uh, the number shoots up in 2013 because, of course, this is the year that they call the year of the breakout black film. You know, 12 Years a Slave, et cetera, et cetera, the butler. 78.8% uh, of, the, of the directors were um, people of color in 2013. And again, uh, the question remains whether that number is going to continue to go up or whether it will go back down to what's been more typical um, in 2014, you know, after those films are, are, are gone. Um, if we look at film writers, we see it's even worse. Uh, greater than 5 to 1, or nearly 5 to 1 in 2012. Only 7.8% of the writers credited for films were people of color. In 2013, a little bit better, greater than 3 to 1, again, because of those black films that, that were out that year. What about the executive suites? Well, if we look at film executives, 94% of the heads of the major studios, if we look at the 18 major studios, the majors and some of the mids, 94% um, white, 100% male. When you start going down to senior management, you see about 92% white, 83% male. 
And only when you get to the unit heads do you see a little bit more gender diversity, if not racial diversity. 96% white, 61% male. So if not depressing you enough yet, let's move to TV. <laughs> TV leads, 2012, 2013. Uh, we look at broadcast scripted, uh, the share of TV leads um, that were people of color versus um, whites, uh, greater than five to one under representation. In 2012, 13 season, only 6.5% of the leads were people of color. In cable, it's much better at 19.3%. Of course, that's due to BET, TV One, and, and some of these Latino uh, cable stations as well, they kind of boost the numbers in cable. Cable is a little different because a lot of these networks are, are niche marketed towards uh, specific demographics. So you see some of the things you don't see in broadcast. Show creators are important, of course, because they set in motion a number of choices that are made in terms of you know who is going to be a writer in the writers' room, um, you know where the, what the premise of the show is, where it, it may be set, um, stories, and so forth and so on. Critical position. Again, minorities woefully underrepresented, greater than six to one um, in broadcast scripted, only 5.9% of these creators. Uh, cable, again, about twice as, 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 as good, but again, not that great, greater than three to one in representation, 10.7% of the show creators in cable scripted. What about TV writers? Again, not a pretty picture. Uh, greater than three to one in the representation, in terms of uh, broadcast um, uh, episodes. 9.7% uh, of those episodes were credited to writers of color. Uh, in, in cable, a little bit better, not much. 11.8% of those episodes credited to writers of color. If we look at TV directors, um, it's a little bit worse, uh, particularly in broadcast, nearly five to one on representation, only 7.5% of the episodes were accredited to directors of color uh, in broadcast in the 2012-13 season. Meanwhile, on cable, a little bit better, 12.7%, nearly three to one under representation. And last, but certainly not least, what about those executive suites in television? Well, 96% white at the very top, 71% male. Uh, senior management, 93% white, 73% male, and when you get to unit heads, you get a little bit more diversity, not all that great, 86% white, 55% male. Right? So here's the actual report that we released. Um, you should have, if you don't have it now, which we get a little bit later on the table, we have a, a handout that actually gives you a link to the full report that you can download in PDF format. It also gives you the uh, web address for our center, the Bunch Center at UCLA, where you can get more information about the report. All right, so I'm going to stop there now that I've impressed you sufficiently. <laughs>